What's up guys? Today we're going to look at Ember Wormhole, the add-on, and see how to get it working. Hey, so what's up? Let's take a look at Ember Wormhole. So you can see here it's an add-on for Ember.js. It's created by Yap Labs. Luke Malia helped design it and create it. And if you're interested, I actually did an interview with Luke last year. It was one of my first interviews. It was really fun. Yeah, he's a very interesting guy. You can check it out. Uh, I'll put it in the description below. So Ember Wormhole, the add-on provides a component that allows for rendering a block to a DOM element somewhere else on the page. But why would you want to do that? The reason why you want to do that is let's say you have a component and you need to put some information in the DOM elsewhere, not inside the component itself. So this is great for like confirmations and other things like that. So let's take a look. So I went ahead and created a empty project. So here it is. I have a server running here. And if we open up localhost 4200, you see nothing is there as we expect. So let's go ahead and create something. So we'll create a template called index. It has been created. And if we look at here, at our templates. Here's our index. We'll do hello, hi there. And hey, it's working. So we definitely see it. So let's take a look and see what else we can do. So let's create a component. We'll call it my comp. And if we go back into our components here, and we'll see, yep, it created it. And there it is. And we'll say this This is a component. It's a really st easy stuff here. We'll make sure we put it in here. My comp. And we can see it. Hey, this is a component. It works. So just to be explicit here, we're going to put in something it shows start component. We're gonna call it end component. So again, I'll just put a bunch of bad bricks here. Just to illustrate a point. Okay, so now we know this is exactly in the DOM where it is. So here it is. If you look here at the bottom, here's our script, here's our breaks, and our start component, and we kind of know exactly this is a component, this is where it is. So let's take a look at an example. Let's say we have an if statement. So we're gonna create an if here. Okay, so we're gonna create something called val property. And we're gonna go val is set to true. Once again, we'll add a break here. And what else? We'll say val is set to false and we're going to end the if there so if we just do it val is set to false because val doesn't exist so let's go ahead and create a controller called index and by convention we know an ember oops let me do that again ember g controller index there it is we know by convention that it's going to match our template, which is also named index. And we'll call it, we'll just put that true for now. So now it's true. So let's let's see if we can make a really simple button. And this is going somewhere, I promise you. We're gonna use Ember Wormhole in a minute. So let's see if we can create a really simple button. So we'll create a button. We'll add an action to it called press. And we'll say press me button. And we'll go back to here and we'll add actions. And press. And oops, let's do this. We won't put it in the component yet. Let's do it in the controller. Actions, and then we're gonna have our press here. 
and we know that there is toggle property which just toggles the boolean so we can go this dot toggle property and we'll pass val in very simple we'll refresh it press me all right looks like it's working so it's changing from true to false and so forth so let's make this a little more complicated let's say we want to do this but we want this button here instead of being right here we want it inside the component and we want the component to change this value so that's pretty easy to do so we'll go back into our index and we'll delete this button and we'll go into our component and we'll paste it and we'll make sure it's all saved and of course it's not doing anything because we don't have anything called press in our component so let's do this let's do break here let's break here and we'll create something called press here which again we'll create action block here we'll create our press but what do we do now because we don't have access to the property of the index but once again that's not too hard so let's let's just do an alert box for now does this work to make sure our components working right yep does this work okay so we know we're, we're talking to the right place so we're gonna go back into our index and where this my comp here is we can actually pass actions into the component which is really simple before you had to do send actions but this is easier so let's call an action called not to get confuse everything else call it uh, BT action and we'll do action and we'll pass the action name which we know is press so now there's something called BT action here and that's going to when um, when you actually you can actually run that action it'll run it inside the press action which is inside the controller so hopefully that's not too confusing but you'll see how it works so now here in our component we can do something like this we can do this dot get bt action and we can just go ahead and invoke it so let's see if that worked so now we have this hey there it goes so i'm hitting press me here it's changing the value set to false to true by passing this action through but let's take it one step further so let's say we want to have a little more flexibility we want to take this code and we want it completely inside our component which is now inside our index but we still want to be able to um, place it elsewhere on the page without having to pass actions and do everything we're doing now so let's refactor this and see if we can do that so let's just grab this data here we're going to go back to our component and we're going to paste it right here we're still going to have a button here but you know we don't really need to uh, we're still going to have an action here but if we go back to our component we don't need to fire any action here we can create our own let's create our own val true we do the same thing we did in the controller. This dot toggle property. We got val here, and just to clean things up, we don't need this here. We're not going to do any actions right now. We'll just do everything in the component, and that looks good and. Just to make sure we're gonna take this out and it'll just be our normal controller our component again so start component end component so now this is all inside the component and it works as you expect but 
we don't want this to be inside our component here. We want it outside the component. We want it elsewhere in the DOM. So this is where Ember Wormhole comes in handy. So what we need to do is outside here, we can create a div tag called ID equals destination. It can be any ID you want in the div. And then we can do something like this, ember wormhole two equals the ID destination. Okay, and we'll just end the block. We'll save it. And we'll. So now you see val is set to true here. It's outside the component. But you notice when you click it, it doesn't work. Why does it give us a DOM exception? Well, if you look at the documentation, it says. Important notice if using Ember 2.10, that's what we're using. That's the latest version. That you need to add these. If you want to do this, you have to add div tags. So, not sure why, but that's pretty easy. So, we'll add a div here, div here, save it, look back at our example. Yep, that now it's working. So, if we look at the DOM, so here. Is our start component. Here's our component and component, but outside our component is the div tag, and that is where everything is rendering. So that is just a quick example of how to use Ember Wormhole. The obviously one of the good things about it is that you can do uh, you can move elements from your components to elsewhere on the page, higher up in the DOM, which is really handy. When it, and as I was looking at this, one thing I noticed is that, well, like, how do they do this? Especially it's fast boot compatible, which means um, one thing about fast boot is you don't have access to the DOM at all. So I was like, how do they do that? So I looked at the add on and went to the utils and look at the DOM and they're like, oh, they're using a private Ember API usage to do the DOM implementation um, and to get the simple DOM for fast boot. And I was like, that's a little bit of cheating, but hey, it works. So I would use it. And if you have any questions, leave a comment below and uh, please check out all the links you see below in the description. Thanks.